Let us talk a little bit about this reality, this entity known as Iblis. Iblis is the proper name of the leader of the shaitans. Shaitans belong to jinn, shaitans belong to ints. Shaitan is anybody who's trying to take you away from the path. There is one Iblis, there are many shaitans. What is the wisdom in the creation of Iblis? And Ibn al-Qayyim, for example, in his famous book, Ighathat al-Lahafan, he actually has 25 pages dedicated to the question of why would Allah create Iblis? But I'll summarize some of these points. Ibn al-Qayyim says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires the purity of his followers. Allah desires the iman and taqwa, the isti'ada, the tawakkul, the inaba. Allah desires the piety of the righteous. And that piety shall only be manifested by fighting against Iblis. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed this evil entity to exist, it is not because he likes the evil. It is because he loves the piety that comes in combating the evil. The righteousness that comes in overcoming that evil. Also of the wisdoms is that Allah Azza wa Jal personified evil. Can you imagine if evil were some type of cosmic force? If evil were not an actual created entity, what would we do then? But we have evil personified in one being, one entity. And we thank Allah for this because we can now feel a sense of consolation knowing that evil is manifested in one makhluk. And this makhluk is not all powerful. This makhluk is not God. This makhluk is a creation of Allah. And so evil can be conquered when we turn to the one who created this entity. We know that being. We have been told to take precautions against that being. Also of the wisdoms is a lesson for all of us in the story of our father Adam alayhi salam. Iblis is no stranger to humanity. Imagine if we had somebody who showed no enmity to us, no harm to us. We would say, why should we hate this entity? But Allah Azza wa Jal in his wisdom allowed the same entity to be the cause of the downfall of our mother and father. The same entity to do what he did to Adam and Hawa. The same entity to continue to fight every single prophet. And so when we have one particular entity whom history has shown has caused so much damage then how can we not take precautions how can we not feel a sense of genuine anger at this entity and turn to Allah to protect ourselves from this entity also of the wisdoms of the creation of this evil known as Iblis is that we see the diversity of the power of Allah Azza wa Jal he creates the best of the best and he creates other than this. He creates Jibra'il and Mikail and he creates Iblis and the Jinn. He creates the prophets and he creates Fir'aun and Abu Lahab and all the rest of them. So Allah Azza wa Jal's Qudra is manifested. Allah's power is manifested. And in this we are in awe at the magnificence of the Creator. Of the wisdoms of the creation of this entity is that we can truly appreciate good only by contrasting it with evil. We can appreciate beauty when we see what exactly is ugly. We can appreciate the brightness of the day only after the darkness of the night. So by having these contrasts and by knowing how evil an entity can be, because in the end of the day, the evil of Iblis is completely irrational. He gains nothing by misguiding us. He's going to Jahannam anyway. What an irrational evil is this? And we have done nothing to him such that he's an enemy to us. But when that evil is there, so then we are able to understand that there is a particular being, a makhluk of Allah, who harbors so much evil that we have to take our precautions. We have to be careful and this helps us be more righteous. Of the wisdoms as well, and this is a very profound point, brothers and sisters, pay attention to this. Of the wisdoms is that it is actually therapeutic for our own salvation. It is therapeutic for our own betterment. There is a psychological wisdom in having the embodiment, the personification of evil. How so? Because you know, when you want to overcome a personal problem, when you have committed a major mistake, a major crime in this environment and complex, the psychologists say you can't continue to blame yourself for a past mistake. You have to let go and move on, right? In our case, we don't have to just let go. We can easily and factually and correctly blame Iblis for a sin that we have done. And it is correct, Iblis was the one who misguided us, who gave us waswasa. And use that blame in order to make ourselves empowered to move on to live better lives. Now I have to be clear here. We do not blame Iblis in a court of law. We cannot blame Iblis on the day of judgment. It's not gonna work. 
But we can blame Iblis in our personal journey to Allah, in our reflections of our own past. And we think about what we've done and we say, Astaghfirullah, that wasn't me. I'm better than that. That was from Iblis and the whisperings of Iblis. And if I can cut off Iblis, I can eliminate Iblis, then I am a better person with the help of Allah. And that is factually true. When we have an entity that we can legitimately blame for our own shortcomings of the past. Again, this is not a justification of the current. It is not an excuse of the future. But in this dunya, in our journey to Allah, we are not only allowed to, the Quran and Sunnah shows us we blame Iblis, listen to me carefully, for a past mistake or sin in order to rectify ourselves, in order to overcome and be better people. When Yusuf and his brothers had a fight and his brothers did what they did, Yusuf being the wise prophet, how did he recover? How did he bring about unity? He said, Shaytan caused you all to do this. It wasn't from you. Now question, who threw Yusuf in the well? The brothers or Shaytan? Well, it was the brothers, but who whispered it to them? Who zayyana lahum was shaytan? Who beautified it? Clearly it was shaytan. Now that Yusuf wants to mend the hearts, now that we need to move forward, we can bring in this third party called Iblis. We can say, that's not you. You're better than that. That was Iblis. You're factually correct when you blame Iblis. This is passing the responsibility of a past sin. You still have to make them in the eyes of Allah in order that you rectify yourself. And what a beautiful, amazing, psychological blessing. You are better than this, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, you're better than this. Something happened in the past that is shameful. You committed a sin that really causes you pain. Well, it's good it causes you pain. It's good it causes you shame. But guess what? You need to stop just blaming yourself and realize, yes, Iblis was involved. And you can be better. And your addiction, that's coming from Iblis. That evil that you did, that harsh statement that you said, the physical pain that you caused, the stealing that you did, the sharab, the khamar, everything that you did, it was Iblis' fault. Now be better. Cut him out of your life. Stand up and be a worshiper of Allah. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and blame that evil. A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim. Blame him because you are a better person. This is a beautiful wisdom in the creation and in the manifestation of this entity. Because لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Allah created us good. Allah created us high up. And then shaytan waswas and shaytan misguides. So we get rid of shaytan and we come back to the ahsani taqweem. So my advice to myself and all of you, rise up to the potential that Allah wanted for you and Allah created you for. Cut off from shaytan, turn to Allah, give up the lifestyle that is an evil lifestyle. And inshaAllah ta'ala in defeating shaytan and in overcoming shaytan, that is how we will return to the abode where we were before shaytan caused our brother and father to be expelled from it. 